Our CAA game of the week is in the books. What a game it was from half to half. It became a pretty interesting one by the end. Let's show you how it all happened. Quite the history over the last few years between these two teams meeting in the NCAA tournament during Yale's championship run two years ago. A lot of these games, very good ones at that. And this one started off pretty close as well. Billy Philpot here making it a 3-1 lead about 10 minutes in. But as we get going here, you'll see a trend, and that's UMass controlling the tempo on offense and being efficient in the offense as well. That's Philpot again making it 5-1. It's 6-2 a little bit later. Jeff Trainer to Gabriel Prosik right there in front. He can finish in the crease. 7-2 seven and two, seven to two at that point in the second. Still 7-2. to two. Kevin Tobin putting the defenseman on skates. Putting his foot in the ground, making it 8-2. to two. Watch this again. What a move there. The inside, a long goal line extended, beating Yale in more ways than one. 8-2. to two. Here's Phil Pot again here in the second. The run continues for UMass. It's 9-2. to two. Yale's the number one team in the country. UMass has a huge lead, 11-2 to two at the half, as you see here, as it's 9-2. Another one. This time, the lefty finish is a good one. As I mentioned, 11-2 UMass in the hat. But in the second half, things got a little bit closer. Jackson Morrill, the Christian crop. Yale crawling back in. It's a six-goal game, 11-5. Now it's still a six-goal game, 12-6. Two minutes to go in the third. Matt Gaudet, most outstanding player a few years ago in the NCAA tournament, finishes there. 12-7, a five-goal game. Still a five-goal game as we start the fourth. Brian Tevlin. This time, finding Matt Brandau just sitting and waiting and shooting and scoring. 12-8 at that point. Four-goal game. Here comes Yale again. Matt Gaudet. You saw T.D. Erland at the beginning of this highlight, winning all the face-offs for the most part during this time period, giving Yale plenty of possessions, making it 12-9. But UMass winning the big face-offs, scoring when they needed to the most. It's Mike Tobin again 13-9 UMass, and then when it came to the last few minutes of the game, Matt Note in goal was the stopper. Two huge saves against Yale. That's on Tevlin to start, and then one more you're going to see right here. These are all in the closing moments. It was a three-goal game at this point, so Yale could have gone on a run. They had plenty of time, but Note with 12 saves on the day, none bigger than those two to finish things off. UMass knocking off number one here on Saturday afternoon, 13 to 10 in Amherst. What a performance by UMass through and through. As I mentioned, let Yale back in sort of at the end, but in the end, it's a W for UMass and a big one for this team at that. Who came in struggling, didn't really know what they had thus far, but now we have an idea of how much talent and how good they can be with a win over the top team in the nation. Phil Pot finishing with four goals and an assist on the day. Trainer was huge with a couple of huge goals in there as well. He also had four points. In the losing effort, Goff dead at five goals for Yale. Other than that, I talked about T.D. Earl, and he went 20 of 26, but Hockman for UMass went 6 to 25, but you heard Greg Sagan on the broadcast. He won some big ones, and that, that's what mattered the most, especially when you look at some of these team stats here as we had there right now. Yale had 25 turnovers overall. Most of those, I'd say 80% of those came in the first half, but 25 turnovers are something that it's hard to come back from, especially that evens out when it comes to the faceoffs as well. You look at the saves there, as I mentioned, note making 12. Jack Starr for Yale came in in the second half and did provide them a boost with four saves in the second half. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when Yale was coming back, he made some saves to get them possession to make it 13-10 there, but in the final score. UMass, 13, Yale, 10. What a day there in Amherst as UMass gets a huge win for their program to beat the number one team.